Hi, welcome. I'm Helmut Licht. Thank you for joining me for this video in which I would like to explain to you the uh, phenomena of sympathetic vibration and how it can be used to our advantage in conjunction with astrology. All right, right here, I have a crystal glass. I will hit this now with a spoon and it has a certain note to it. If I could sing this note very powerfully, after a short while, the glass would start to vibrate. It is the exact same note. And then as I sang stronger and stronger, the vibration in the glass would increase to the point where it would ultimately shatter. Caruso used to do that. He used to go into a restaurant and get the note from my wine glass, put it down on the table, step back a few steps and sing the same note so powerfully that first the glass would start to vibrate and you could hear it vibrate and then ultimately it would smash, shatter. If you don't believe this, well, I invite you to watch this very brief video where a little boy accomplished just that. So what we had was a source vibration, the boy's voice, and then something external to that source, which vibrated to the same note. It is unimportant that the glass shattered. What is important is that the glass picked up the vibration from the boy and started vibrating to it. That is important. And I will explain to you why that is important in astrology. The Kibarian Book of Hermetic Philosophy states that there are seven hermetic principles. And we are interested here in the second principle, the principle of vibration. It states that nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. When the Kabbalion says that everything vibrates, it means everything from the smallest particle up to the largest universe. If this is true, then our thoughts must also vibrate. And so it is. Our thoughts are basically vibrations. Our intelligence takes individual parts and combines them into a larger concept. So something that has four wheels, a trunk, seats, a steering wheel, an engine, we call a car. Something that has three bedrooms, a living room, a dining room, a kitchen, a basement, an attic, and so on, we call it a house. So let's call all our thoughts that we think our thought body. Our horoscope is a picture of our thought body as it had been developed up to the point where we were born into this life experience. And how is a thought body built? Well, let's just uh, assume that I was born into this life experience with no previous thoughts. In other words, we are starting with an empty horoscope. Now, I have been teaching ballroom dancing since 1958, and therefore I have been dancing that long too. And that would sort of put Venus, the graceful planet, into the house of the body, which is the first house. So let's put Venus in the first house. I've also made a living in music since 1958. So let's put uh, Neptune music 
into the ten towers of the career. So Neptune goes up there. I have produced over 5,000 pieces of digital art, and I'm still going strong. So let's put the sun into the fifth house down here of creativity. I'm just showing you how in this life I would have built up very strong thoughts in the tenth house of the career with music, in the first house teaching dancing, making people look graceful, and then also creating art down here in the fifth house of creativity. But we don't come into this life with a blank thought body. We come into this life with a very complicated thought body that was built up and developed by us thinking along certain lines and having certain experiences in our previous lives. So the, our horoscope shows that thought body that we entered into this life with. I will now show you the colors assigned to the planets and the signs of the zodiac as listed in course 6 of the Brotherhood of Light Lessons titled The Sacred Tarot. The sun is orange, the moon is green, Mercury is violet, Venus is yellow, Mars is red, Jupiter purple indigo, Saturn is blue, Uranus is white, Neptune is iridescent, and Pluto is black. And here are the signs. Aries is a light red, Taurus a dark yellow, Gemini a light violet, Cancer a light green, Leo a light orange, Virgo dark violet, Libra light yellow, Scorpio dark red, Sagittarius light purple, Capricorn dark blue, Aquarius a light blue, and Pisces a dark purple. Let's take a completely empty chart no signs, no planets, and place three planets into it. The Sun in the 10th house, Jupiter in the 2nd house, and Mars in the 7th house. I'm showing the planets with their colors. The Sun, orange, Jupiter, purple, indigo, and Mars, bright red. Remember that the planets represent urges within you. And I have uh, used the key words as provided by the Brotherhood of Light. So the sun is called the urge for significance. Jupiter is the expansive urge that makes things better and bigger. And Mars is the aggressive urge. Aggressive just meaning get up and go, do something, activity. Now, let's suppose that the owner of this chart is staring at a piece of orange paper, looking at it, absorbing its vibration, becoming part of it, <clears throat> really, really uh, thinking and feeling that orange color. After a while, those thoughts within him, signified by the color orange, which is the sun, urge for significance, would start to vibrate in sympathetic vibration. And once those thoughts become activated, then his urge for significance would start creating a situation in his life having to do with the tenth house and his significance. That person would suddenly have the mental energy to create 
something which will give him or her fame, honor, and help their reputation. Now let's have the owner of this chart stare and absorb the vibrations of a purple piece of paper. After a while, Jupiter, whose color is purple, would start to vibrate and uh, activate the second house of money or property and uh, attract fortunate things in that department. And while we have the owner of the shard looking at colored paper, let's have him or her look at a red piece of paper. Absorb the vibration, become part of it, and it would set up a sympathetic vibration within that person's thought body corresponding to Mars which is the aggressive urge, causing that person to start to do something in connection with partnership that uh, involves some kind of activity. Could be taking ballroom dancing lessons, all kinds of things. Tennis, taking a, a tennis course. In the last three examples, we have only considered one planet at a time, the sun by itself. Jupiter by itself and Mars by itself. But let's have another look at this chart and note that the Sun and Jupiter form a trine aspect and the Sun and Mars form a square aspect. With this in mind, let us now have the owner of the chart look at a piece of paper with two colors on it, namely orange and purple. By focusing on those two colors, uh, the Sun and Jupiter are activated within his thought processes. And by being activated, they will now work to bring into his life something having to do with the tenth house and the second house. And since natally those two planets are in a fortunate, lucky aspect, whatever they are attracting will be also fortunate, pleasant, and so on. And then let's have the owner of the chart look at another piece of paper with orange and red on it. Naturally, after a while, they will activate the sun, orange, and Mars, red, and then uh, those two planets will work to bring something into the life having to do with the 10th house and the 7th house. And since natally these two planets are in a square aspect, the situation created is liable to be uh, problematic. Let's leave it at that. So now to show you what this video is all about. Let's uh, assume that you are the owner of the chart that we have been discussing. And now you decide that you want to get some new curtains for your living room. Curtains are something that you look at all day long. Which of the two curtains would you get? Would you get this one, which is a combination of orange, and purple, or would you get this one, which is a combination of orange and red? Remember now, orange and purple is Sun and Jupiter trine. Orange and red is the Sun and Mars square. And finally, ladies, would you buy this dress, orange and purple, or would you buy this dress, orange and red? This concludes my first video on astrology and colors. I hope you found it interesting. If you are an astrologer, 
you have access to information that very, very few people have. So, in the next video, I will discuss what do you do when two people live in a house together, or maybe a whole family, where you might arrange colors to suit you, but in so doing, you might not be helping, even hindering other members of your family. But there's a way around that. And what that way is, you will have to watch my next video. Have a great day and keep astrologing.